Hello and welcome to my channel. Yeah, new video in this uh, new place. <laughs> I would like to make a cheap robot arm in order to make a cheap robot. And for this cheap robot arm, I need a cheap servo motor or actuator. So that's why I decided to use the 3D printing for this. And this is one of the attempts to do this cheap actuator. So here the gearbox is mostly 3D printed, but the motor and controller here are quite expensive. This is a brushless motor and Motius controller. So in the next iteration, what I did, I made this actuator. So it's a little bit bigger. It has higher reduction ratio. Here it's around 30 and here it's around 100. And I used the stepper motor. So this setup is way cheaper. This setup cost only $32. So motor, two bearings, and the uh, controller. But the problem with this one is that it can handle quite easily the radial load, but it cannot handle much axial load. At least it can handle some axial load, but I would like to improve this. And so in order to improve it, I would like to make a slew bearing over here. So to put cross roller bearing made out of plastic. So it's going to be 3D printed and like this, it's not going to increase the cost of overall actuator. So let's look at the design. The original idea of this actuator came from the company Genesis Robotics and they decided to make a big actuator with the big gears, with a lot of gears and like this they can use just plastic for these gears and still this actuator should be quite powerful. Here's the schematics of this gearbox. So there is an output ring, consists from two parts here. This is the planets, the sun gear, the sun gear is input and there are also two cross roller bearings, one here and one over here. So this is the schematics, sun input, this is the planets, green one, this is a fixed ring, this ring and this ring, and this is the output ring at the center. Also this channel experimented with this gearbox and they came up with a quite nice design. This is how it looks inside and actually my design is very similar to this one. But my design is made for the stepper motor. So here is my current design, here the stepper motor should be installed. This is a fixed ring, this is a fixed ring and the output ring is over here. And this is our slew bearing, one from this side and another one from this side. It should be here. And this is our sun gear. And the sun gear is going to be moved by the stepper motor over here. And this design should have eight planets, I put only one. Before I came up to this design, I tried different other designs. Basically, they are different only in the helical gears. Initially, I wanted to put the helical gear only on the output ring and the normal gear on the fixed ring. Like here you see, it's straight and here it's a helical gear. And I wanted to do this in order to avoid the axial forces on the fixed gear due to the helical uh, gears uh, over here. Because if you have the helical gear here, like this, when the planet going to rotate, uh, depending on the direction of the rotation of the planet, it's going to push or to pull this fixed ring. So initially I wanted to do like this. So uh, with this normal gears, there is no any push or pull of the ring. So there is no any axial forces. But the problem is that this design is uh, not possible to assemble. Yeah, and so that's why I decided to go with the helical gears on both sides, on the fixed ring and also on the output ring, like here. And after I decided that uh, this is not a good idea, so I changed the reduction ratio. I came up uh, with this planet, with this output ring and with this fixed ring. And in this case, I can assemble this gearbox, but the problem is that uh, in this case, the planet is too big and I cannot fit eight planets inside. So I decided uh, to do some kind of compromise. The compromise is that I still use the helical gears but I used the helical gears with a low angle. So it's almost uh, like normal gears. Okay, enough about design, let's look at the 3D prints. And now the quick ad from the sponsor of today's video, Phantom Wallet. It's a compact and stylish wallet, which has a special mechanism to access your cards. They have three sizes and plenty different finishes. Phantom R wallet has screw holes where you can mount various accessories like coin holder, cash holder, key holder, ID tracker, etc. Or you can even design and 3D print your own accessory. 
All this gives you a lot of possibilities for the customization. And this is how I use my Phantom wallet. I have bolted this wallet to my iPhone case. And this is very practical. Whenever I need a phone, I need my wallet. And whenever I need my wallet, I need my phone. You can find more information following the link in the description to this video. I have decided to start 3D printing from the bearing, from the slew or cross roller bearing. So here's the first iteration, you see the rollers, the really cross roller. Each roller has a conical shape and this first prototype has a lot of play. So I need to take care of this. After multiple other prototypes, I finally get to this one, which does not have a lot of play, but it does not rotate so freely as before. And the thing which I don't really like that rotation is not very smooth. There are some points where it stacks. Maybe the lubrication will help. This we will check. And I think the problem why it stacks at some points is because of the seams. Just to show you what the seams are, here are the seams. It's these points where the perimeters of the 3D printer starts and ends. And for example, here the surface is very smooth, but here we can feel this line. And I think such kind of line on each roller makes a problem. So in the current prototype, in order to solve this problem, in the slicer I put the option to put the seams randomly. But the problem is that this option does not work perfectly and uh, you see that there are seams here, there are a lot of them here, and yeah, so it's not really random. But nevertheless, let's try to assemble it, let's put some lubrication and uh, maybe it will work. And also in order to have the best tolerances, I 3D printed all the parts on the same printer. In order to align this ring over here, I used the dowel pins, 2 by 8 millimeters dowel pins. And so it will go like this, but I need to put the grease before. I'm going to use this Teflon based grease. I use it for all my plastic projects. I think it would be easier to put the grease first and afterwards put the rollers inside. Now to fix everything, I'm going to use the standoffs. These 8 mm standoffs for the M3 screws goes here, like this, and I need 10 of them. And 25 mm long screw goes on the opposite side, and we need to repeat this 9 times. I have fixed all the screws, and I should say that it works quite well. The motion is not super smooth, but it's quite okay. There is no much play. Of course, the question how durable it's going to be, but uh, this is another question. And anyway, as it's 3D printed, we can always reprint it. And for this actuator, I would need two cross roller bearings like this one. So here there are the pieces for the second one. And this time I'm not going to forget to put the embedded nuts over here, like I did in this one. And I would fix temporarily these embedded nuts with the screws like this, they're not going to fall. Also this time I will put first the grease and afterwards the rollers. The dowel pins are installed and we can put this ring over here, press it, put the screws and it's ready. And now they are too ready and so we will take care of the sun gear. This is the sun gear axis and here I installed the M3 nuts and the dowel pins. To support the sun gear on the axis I would use two bearings. This is 6710 bearings. And this is how it looks, the assembly of the sun gear with the axis and two bearings. Now when we have the sun gear, we can assemble the planet gears around it. In order to assist this assembly, I have made these parts. And let me show you how it's going to work. So this part goes here. So now it's like this. On this ring, I have properly adjust the heights of each of this cylinder. And so like this, when I put a planet, it aligns perfectly with the sun gear in terms of the heights. On each planet, there is a mark over here, which shows in which orientation this planet was 3D printed on the build plate. And this will help me to align all these planets with the sun. And so you can see how they are aligned up, right, down, left, up, right, down, left. Now the second such ring just goes on top. And now all the planets are fixed. Now the ring gear goes on top. You should take the right ring gear because they are mirrored. I need to install embedded nuts over here from the other side and on another half. So this is the nuts and this is a small piece which is going to retain these nuts. 
So the nuts goes in the slots. I'm going to put the nut and when I'm going to rotate it, the nut can fall. So that's why I'm going to use these pieces, which are going to hold our nuts. Just like this. Also over here there are other places for the double pins, but I think it's going to be overkill, so I'm not going to use them. I think already these pieces and standoffs are going to provide a good alignment. The next important point that this part, so the part of the cross roller bearing, it should be aligned with the same piece over here. And yes, this is embedded nuts which fell off, so I need to put them back. So basically we need to align this piece and the same piece on another half. And for this I 3D printed these parts. And this part has a hole for the screw head, like this. And afterwards I fix it over here. And we need to do the same with the other half. And afterwards we can put them together and they should be aligned. And now we can assemble these two pieces. As you can see it's still not aligned perfectly. And to align it I need to push this part inside a little bit to put the planets and the sun gear in the middle. Like this it aligns and now I can push together two parts. Now I can unmount these helping tools. Nice. Now we need to secure two parts with the screws from one side and from another side and we will continue with the assembly. Now in order to make everything run smoothly I need to put some grease and afterwards we can mount one cow from one side and another cow from another side. Maybe I should put even more grease but for the moment it's going to be like this. Now I need to align all the holes, for this I'm going to use these two screws. And now we fix it with a lot of screws. <laughs> looks cool! And now exactly the same procedure we need to do from this side. But with slightly different cover. I have just remembered that I cannot install this piece before installing the stepper. Because the holes for the screws to fix the steppers are from this side, so I need to put the screws from this side. So first of all we need to put our stepper motor and only afterwards we can mount this plate. And this is my stepper. This is a gear for the stepper and some piece which will go here, some kind of spacer. And on this small gear I'm going to use a standard technique which I really like, is to put the metal collar inside over here. And now in this hole I will put a long screw, headless screw like this one. And so all the torque is going to be transmitted through this screw. This piece should be all the way in. Here it's flat and it still rotates freely. And now this small headless screw goes on the side. My screw sticks a little bit, but this is not a problem. It does not touch anything, so it's perfect. Now it goes here and it should be fixed with the four 14 millimeters long M3 screws. Now I just need to put the grease on this small gear and on this bigger gear and we can assemble it and like this is going to be done. Yeah, it looks big but I like it. I have put the grease on this small gear and also on this big gear. Again, we need to align all the holes. Ta-da! It's huge. But I really like it and I hope it's going to work well. I think this is my best 3D printed gearbox. Now we just need to connect it and see if it works and how it sounds. I think it's going to be really loud because of this cross roller bearings. If it's going to work well I'm going to use it in order to make the robot arm. So this is going to be three lowest joints, so the joints for the shoulder of the robot arm. And this is the electronics which I'm going to use in order to run this stepper. Over here there is power supply for Arduino Mega. This big power supply to power up three stepper drivers. And over here there are two joysticks. So the signal from the joystick goes to the Arduino Mega and after the Arduino Mega controls the stepper drivers. This is the electronics from the old project, but it should work. And so I have connected the motor to the first driver. And let's run it for the very first time. This part should stay fixed and this part should rotate. Let's uh, switch it on. No explosion. This is a good start. Ooh. It rotates. It's not fast, but uh, I was expecting this because the gear ratio is uh, quite high. 
By the way, this are the holes to mount uh, something on the output. Like for example, I will mount here the next joint of the robot arm. I think it's no way to stop it by the hand. I will hold it like this. No, I would not be able to stop it. No way. <laughs> no way, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I have also connected this gearbox, so this is a previous version, without cross roller bearings. And uh, let's just uh, run them together and uh, kind of compare them. It's not really comparison, just running them together. This one, the old version, is way more silent. But I think this is expected because it doesn't have any cross roller bearings. So these are the three actuators, three planetary compound actuators. This one, the first one, it has the brushless motor and controller, and that's why it's quite expensive. Just the brushless motor and the controller is $160. That's why I made this cheaper version, which uses the stepper motor. But in total, this actuator is around $32. And this one has exactly the same price, because it has exactly the same motor, exactly the same bearings, and slightly different uh, hardware like screws, uh, standoffs and dowel pins. I would like to make some small modification to this gearbox, because right now it has a lot of dowel pins and I think most of these dowel pins could be eliminated. But uh, the rest I'm going to leave the same. As usual, the CAD files and STL files are going to be available for my patrons, just for $10 per month. And uh, I do like this design, even though it doesn't sound as well as this one. But I think it's going to be more solid because of these two additional cross roller bearings. It's bigger, yes, but I think for the robot arm it's going to work. So I do plan to design the smaller version of this actuator and also the intermediate version of this actuator. Like this, with these three versions, I would be able to make the robot arm. At least this is a plan. And if you would like to accelerate me, don't forget to put the like to this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So basically, the more likes I'm going to have under this video, the more subscribers I'm going to have, the more videos I'm going to produce. So it's simple, the faster the channel grows, the more energy I'm going to put to this channel. So I'm trying to do my best, but for the moment, because of the channel does not grow, it's still complicated. So help me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thanks to these brave people, this channel is still exist. Thank you guys and girls, you are the best. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.